welcome to the Stampede University School of Influencing. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> that was a pretty chaotic introduction. Well, guess what? So is the world of being an influencer. It is absolutely chaotic and so far not controlled, which means there's absolutely no barrier to entry. Anyone can live this lifestyle. And I am not a gatekeeper. I'm here to help you as a professor of this school. And the, I think my favorite part of being an influencer is truly that there is no barrier to entry. Anyone can do this with the right advice and tips and mindset. I have changed my life drastically. I went from being a crazy girl with bangs in Santa Monica to a crazy girl with bangs in Santa Monica with a fat checking account and great retirement and all around just a great life from the comfort of my home. So if you also want this lifestyle, working from home, doing what you love, reaching people, talking to people, helping them, showing your passions, being mildly hot in a weird way, I'm here to help you. Actually, scratch the last part, I can't help you with that. But everything else, I'm here to help you. I haven't uploaded one of these videos in a while because as a professor, it is frustrating when people play the victim mindset. I want everybody to succeed. I want to help everybody but I can't. Very small fraction of people got irritated with my videos that went viral on how to start a channel, giving all this practical advice and honest advice that you don't see on other channels. They were saying, Kelly Stamps, you went viral because you're special. You went viral because you have this privilege. You have this privilege. Oh, I can't because this, but you, what privilege are you talking about? I come from pretty much a normal background there is nothing that gave me an advantage other than personality on YouTube or the internet to succeed. Everybody has a chance in this world, I believe. Of course, there are some things that will set you back, like you know, being born into absolute dirt poor poverty trying to go become a brain surgeon tomorrow. But we're talking about something as simple as the internet. And how dare you say I'm privileged and that's why I started off already with a leg up on YouTube. When my dad died last year, I inherited two jet magazines and some empty Snapple bottles. What privilege are you talking about? I don't come from any wealthy, super different background. I'm just a woman who has a lot of ambition. And here I am to tell you, da -da -da -da! Influencer 101. I broke this down into three sections and I will go through this as quickly as I can, as succinctly as I can because I have a tendency to ramble. So number one, brand deals. Number two, the ugly truth. Three myths. Now I'm gonna go through each of these very, very, very quickly. I got this whiteboard from Japanese dollar store, Daiso, and I love it. I love it so much. I'm gonna have so much fun with this. I need to get a wider marker, one that's thicker so that you can see this actually. So I'm just gonna sit it down here for now. The number one question I get is how do I get brand deals? You clicked on this video because you want to be an influencer, which means you want to make money. No one ever gives a straight answer online because it's kind of hard to, but I will give it to you straight. No juice, no chaser, no apple juice, no Tropicana lemonade. You don't reach out to brands when you're starting out. They reach out to you. Think of yourself as a runway model. You are a model, let's say mid tier, right? And you have this aspiration. I want to walk for Chanel. You can't, well, you maybe can, but it is unlikely to get hired by a Chanel runway show if you have zero experience, zero work under your belt, absolutely nothing on your resume to show for. That's how brand deals work. A big company, like the ones that sponsor me, were not looking for me when I had two or three or even 400 subscribers because what they're paying is for someone who's on this kind of level, right? Never call yourself a small YouTuber or a small TikToker. I always say you're just a budding sensation. No one knows who you are yet. You have to show that you're worthy of being paid. You have to show that you have an audience that's growing. You have to show these things in order for brand deals to come in. By come in, I mean you quite literally put your email or however you want to be reached in your description box of your videos or TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is. Brands will reach out to you. Now you're not gonna like them initially. It's gonna be stuff like, you know, Happy Sunny Flower Hair Company in China. They're gonna reach out, hello, dear friend. You're gonna be like, oh no, Kelly warned us about the dear friend. Dear friends are the worst kind of emails you can get. They want you to receive a bunch of hair bundles or makeup and you post it for free. Now, 
If you're like me, you give in to these kind of things because it's free hair. Are you kidding me? Weaves are so expensive. Everything is so expensive. Being a woman is so expensive if you want it to be. We cost a lot of money. So obviously I'm going to say yes to free hair. You know, it's not bad to do because the number, the number two question I get is Kelly Stamps. This company wants me to promote their, you know, mug for free. Is this a ripoff? I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. I get this question all the time in my comments. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. You have nothing to show for yet. So it is actually okay to promote that mug company for free in a couple of your videos because we're gonna go back to the runway theory. The casting director for the runway show is like the manager of influencer agencies or just brands, right? They hire someone who actually scours the internet all day long. It's their job to look for talent, or in this case, models, who are up and coming and rising. It's not about how many subscribers you have or how many followers you have. It's about engagement. You need to learn how to create engagement. That's the catch 22. I can't help you learn how to make engagement happen. You have to be an interesting enough person. You have to be charismatic. Whatever it is that makes people follow you, you have to learn how to use that. And I think the hardest part for people is transferring their personality in real life to the camera. Because even to this day, I get nervous sometimes talking in front of the camera. But it's not nerves as in I'm shy. It's more like, oh shoot, you can get canceled for literally anything these days. And I say so many off color things off camera because that's my sense of humor. Like I would have been canceled if I actually talked the way I do it on camera. One day, one can dream. I can just come on here and say jokes that are inappropriate. When you build that engagement, that's when you're on the radar. You're not on the radar if you haven't done anything yet. You have to lose some to win some. You have to give in and you know do one or two free brand deals. Do whatever you need to do to get on the radar. There are some people who got lucky and haven't had to be you know lowballed to get noticed, but that's not most of us. Most of us have actually had that horror story of a company paying us like 200 or 300 dollars or even less than that to do some crazy levels of work because we just didn't know. There was no one on the internet like me just openly saying how much we get paid. And I deleted some of those videos slash made them private just because it's no one's business. And I realized, like I said, I'm kind of hot and cold about doing these videos because as much as I want to be transparent, I know that there's a lot of people who want this life that I have, but they don't really want to put in the work for it. It's a lot more work than it looks. And that's the harsh truth. You have to really want to work for it. Influencing, being an influencer is an easy job, but maintaining it long term and paying your bills and paying your rent is so difficult. The algorithm is kind of unpredictable. Miss girl, I'm over her. She's hot, she's cold. She's yes and she's no. You in your luxury apartment, then you out on the flow. You have to be good. You have to be sharp and smart like I am because I have a method to my madness. We're gonna dive deeper for a second and talk about the manager situation. Like, do I need a manager? Do I not need a manager? There are different types of managers. There's like talent managers. Not only do they manage your brand deals, but they take over your channel and your content that you post. If you literally don't wanna even learn how to market yourself and you just don't wanna create even topics for your videos, there are people out there, there are agencies who actually manage people's entire channels. They tell them what to, what to not post, all of that. That's for people who just really want a completely automated life, but they're gonna take 20% or even more, usually it's 20 to 25% of your AdSense and your brand deals. Are you out of your mind? I would never let someone touch my AdSense ever, period. I'm like, are you, are you okay? Are you okay? Like I'm trying to ride this AdSense train to freedom. Like, why would you? I have management as of two weeks ago. We haven't done anything yet. When I used to have managers, they would basically send me three to four emails a week saying, hey Kelly, New Balance wants to sponsor you. They have a budget of, let's just give an example, $7,000 to offer you for doing an ad read of two to three minutes saying, I love my New Balance 550s. They are so comfy. Oh my goodness, I love them so much. Use my link in the description box, whatever. That's usually how it is. They have a round of usually crazy edits where they say like, we don't like the way that your bangs were sitting. Can you please redo it and do this over again? And just, you know, basically refilm the whole thing. Sorry, boo, mm, love you. It gets annoying. However, 
you're being paid literally thousands of dollars to do something very simple, which is talk about a brand that you truly like, hopefully, and promote it out there. You're an influencer, but this is much bigger than you. Your channel is like a bulletin board. I don't want to like reduce myself to an object, but as a business woman, brands want to just promote themselves and attach themselves to you because you got it going on online. A lot of the time YouTube viewers take offense to this when they see their favorite YouTubers like doing lots of brand deals and sponsors. I do only two a month, which is not bad, but some people do like eight a month or even 10. Some people don't even upload unless the video is sponsored. This video is not sponsored. But when videos are sponsored, we're getting paid oftentimes 10 times what we would make on AdSense. Typical AdSense for like my kind of channel is like $4,000 a month or even 3,000. I exceed that usually every month. Some months it just floats around there. I don't know. It just, it changes every month depending on when I want to upload or not and how long the videos are, all that. Ads pay us a lot of money, unbelievable amounts. And sometimes I'm like, y'all really want to pay me that? Okay, to freedom? Like, I don't question it. I just, I got to ride to freedom. I don't care. For me, that freedom is financial freedom and investing it and retiring by 30 because I'm done working at 30. I'm done. I'm 25. I'm over it. I'm done. I don't want to work forever. And the last bit I have on this is on negotiating. Again, I can't teach you how to negotiate. However, I can urge you to fight for what is right, what you think you're worth. And you can always ask around. Again, a lot of influencers for some reason are very tight lip about this as if there's not enough clout to go around, which there totally is, which is silly. Today is Wednesday, March 9th. At the point of filming this video, I believe I have like 660,000, 659,000 subscribers. And I currently am getting lower than usual, like half a million views a month. And my CPM, I don't know what it is right now. I should know this actually. For my brand deals, again, I'm only giving a ballpark because I will never give all my cards out on the internet because brands are watching me right now. They wanna know how much to pay me and I will never lowball myself. I always go higher. 660 subscribers, it's not about the number, it's about the engagement, CPM, all that. 550,000 uh, views to 1 million a month. I am in the range of like low end, 10,000, higher end, typically 35,000 for a sponsor. I only do two sponsors a month typically. This month I'm doing three, but one of them pays me 17,000. The other one is typically 30,000. The other one is like a hit or a miss, it depends. It's usually lower, like 10,000 or sometimes even 9,000. The reason why these are scattered is because one of them really means a lot to me and I don't care how much they pay me. It's just because I feel like I'm getting good word out. The other one that's, you know, like bigger, is something that is definitely an impactful type of video where it's gonna take me a long time to make. They know that, they know there's gonna be a lot of edits. The bigger the company, the more they request edits from you, you have to really fight for your money on those. And bigger company means more money. Smaller companies, every now and then I'm like, all right, I'll do this one if it benefits me. You can't be a bulletin board in a negative way just letting anybody on your channel. Do not let yourself be you know, a wall in a coffee shop. You don't want everybody promoting you. Don't belong to the streets, have some class. My goodness, I know you're raising a barn, but have some decorum. Bottom line, establish your voice, have a following, grow your channel. That's the hardest part is growing your channel. My channel is growing, but it's growing at a slower rate right now because I've been doing videos that are for my subscribers. This is the type of video that's for my subscribers and new people who are wanting to search these topics because a video titled, you know, vlog, shopping with plants, buying plants, cutting my struggle bangs, people aren't searching that. They're not, it's not searchable content, but that's good for me because it keeps up my, you know, usual following, it entertains the stampede. I know what they want to see, but I also know what other people want to see. This is an example of a video that reaches other people or something like trying new foods for a day or shopping haul because everybody has to shop. Everybody has to eat. Everybody likes to travel or not everybody, but most people do. So you have to think content that's going to grow, content that's going to entertain my following, find your balance, grow your channel, have a regular base. It's harder than it looks, I know, but once you get it down, you figure it out. Round two, the ugly truth. People do not scroll on the internet looking to be reminded of their situations, which typically is how boring their job is, how boring their week is, how uneventful their day is. You need to put out content that is worth aspiring towards, worth envying, takes them out of their boredom to a different place. Every single one of my videos have taken you from beginning 
middle and there's a story, there's something I'm trying to, you know, conquest, there will always be an ending that's different from the beginning. Or you will take away something, a lesson learned. I don't have to show, you know, renting out Lamborghinis and collecting bags and, you know, I'm not talking about envy in that way. I mean, you need a slightly enviable life as in something that makes other people feel inspired. Why would someone want to come on YouTube and watch somebody who's just moping about how miserable they are? Poor me, my life sucks, it's never gonna change. I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. You'll get a following of other miserable people and that's not fun. My following is consisted of hot girls, hot boys, hot. Like, I don't know what you all look like exactly, but I just know that hot people don't have to, you know, put themselves down or put others down to make themselves rise up. Hot people, rarely have, you know, bad vibes. We're just, I say we, yes, I feel like I'm hot in a really weird way, like I said. I'm just excited about life. I'm very happy to just, you know, wake up in the morning and feeling very grateful. That positive energy rubs off on other people and other people wanna watch that. I had to fake it till I made it for a little bit. In the beginning, you don't know if I lived at home or if I had my own apartment or not because it's nobody's business. I don't care what your situation is as a viewer, as someone who likes to view YouTube as well. I just want to see something different because why else would I go online? I could just, you know, walk around my apartment and do the same things I do every day. If you have a chaotic household, which I think most people actually do, whether they want to admit it or not, you need to do your best to hide that. People don't want to see someone, you know, with people screaming in the background, all this chaos going on. We want to think that you are the quintessential it girl living in a cute place or if you're roommates or whatever. We are naturally, you know, kind of superficial as humans. I can't think of any influencers who have a really like ugly background, dim lighting, all that, you know, jazz going on in the background. I didn't have a bad background at all, but I was living at home and I had to like constantly fight to have some privacy to make a video. You would never know though, because I was always timing it perfectly. I was always like, this is my time. I need this space, go away. Please go on a walk somewhere. Go, 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 go. I need to go film this video right now because I wanna make money and I wanna, you know, have fun and be happy. Bottom line, appearances do matter. I'm not just talking about physical, we already know that. We know that pretty people get clicks sometimes just because the world is unfair, we know that. But the point is working with what you do have. And right now what I have is Moses parting the Red Sea. One second. Ugh. I have like a permanent middle part in my hair. It's very hard to conceal it. Anyway. I am an honest professor. I will not lie to you and come on here and say, oh, you know, you can do whatever you want. If your room is a mess, you can totally film. No, do not remind people of what they're trying to escape online. If you can get nifty, make your place look bigger than it is. You can move around furniture. I did a little TikTok on this where I showed my actual square footage in my past studio in Dallas. It was tiny, but it looked kind of bigger than it is, or it looked cleaner, wider, brighter. You have to be, creative with this part. I am putting out a lifestyle which is like, you too can live in what looks like to be Costco. You too can live in an industrial type of house and you too can actually do this because I did. What's stopping you? My last note I would like to make is on the myths. The myths of the world of influencing. I wrote down a little script here. You need a lot of followers, blah, blah, blah. Unstable lifestyle, not true. Not true on both. There's a misconception that you need a lot of followers to start making money or to even start paying your bills or rent. That's not true. In fact, the management company that I'm with as of last week, their roster consists of people who have a lot less followers and subscribers, but they are either making side money with it or they're paying their entire rent and bills. Again, there's no magical number that gets you what you need, but I made enough, just enough, just barely enough to survive with, I think it was like 35,000 subscribers. That's rare. And it's because I knew what I was doing. You have to be very nifty. Like I said, nifty is my favorite word to use. I uploaded twice a week. I put at least three ads in a video. You can actually go into YouTube studio and add in more ad breaks. It might annoy your viewers. Mine, no one complained at that point and I took them out. Now it's back to a normal amount. I was also very crafty. I was relying more on AdSense than sponsors back then. So I would upload a very long video and then I would say, go watch this video next. I would add it at the end at an end card and then you get them hooked. My followers were hooked to my videos on how to start a channel. And then it was the traveling videos. And then it was following my actual lifestyle. So you, you, I reeled in my followers into, you know, convincing you that I am worth following. 
my story is interesting and my story is, you know, while it is unique, it's relatable. Anyone can do this if you have the right mindset. Again, the key word is mindset. The other myth that I want to debunk that I wrote down is the unstable assumption. People assume that our paychecks are super unstable and they're like, well, this can all go away tomorrow. Incorrect. This is a multi-million dollar industry and you wouldn't know unless you've been in it or you watch my channel where I'm very transparent. I am getting paid roughly anywhere between like, you know, low end $10,000 for an ad as high as like my highest one has been like six figures so far, which is insane. Insane. I can't even believe it still. I'm like, what, why? Okay. Don't ask questions. They're, they might ask for the money back. That's my money to freedom. There's a lot of money in this industry. It's not gonna go away tomorrow. What could go away tomorrow technically is like youtube.com. With all the money in this industry, there will always be something that humans wanna watch. Humans, we get bored. I scroll on TikTok for like an embarrassing amount of time now because it's so funny to me. There will always be a platform. Do not be scared to actually quit your job and pursue this. Again, you just need to have that drive. You have to. What is unstable is the algorithm. For me, it's been stable again, but there was a point in time over the last few months where it just wasn't promoting my videos on the front page. It's very frustrating when you spend a lot of time editing a video and you put it out and no one watches it. It's for a number of reasons. There are different trends that are happening that I just wasn't following. Um, some seasons are just slower than others, but the sponsorships are stable. They are stable. Class, what are they? Stable. Yes, they are. Because again, when I had management and now I do again, you get two to three emails a week or even more saying, hey, Brittany, Bob, Neutrogena wants to pay you $5,000 for a one and a half minute ad read. Yes or no? You respond saying yes or no. It's that simple. When you say no, they're like, oh, it's okay, no worries. Boom, there's another one. There is a huge, like visualize a roster of a bunch of different brands that you already know and love and use. They are looking actively for influencers to give money to because each brand has a budget. It's massive, it's bigger than you think. So that's how it works behind the scenes. Class, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate you coming back. Please drop any questions that you have that I might have skipped or forgot about. I just wanted to hit those points because it's been a long time since I made this kind of video. Back when I started, I, you know, had like 20,000 something subscribers. So a lot has changed. I've learned a lot. I have learned the hard way about some things. And you know, you live and you learn. I am glad that I started this channel when I did because every year it honestly just gets harder and harder to get in because the window gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's not impossible though. That's why I'm still making these videos because once you're in, you're in. I am in, I am deep in the YouTube circle. I am in there just like a donut, donut. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like here is the twice donut. This is the donut. That's the whole, I am here. See that? That is me with the bangs and everything. That's me. I am deep in that donut hole because I have established myself as a trustworthy influencer, someone who is, you know, to brands also trustworthy because I turn those numbers, honey. I got those numbers. Whenever people on the street ask me, what do you do for a living? I tell them YouTube, they're like, how many subscribers do you have? I say, you know, 660,000 or whatever, 689,000. I don't know how many I have, honestly. Um, their first thought is, oh, so you don't have like a million. So you, how do you pay your rent? They don't know, it's not their fault. But I'm here to tell you, again, being the beacon of truth here, you don't need that many followers to pay your bills, depending on what your lifestyle is like. Mine's a mix of luxury and potato. I'm a luxurious potato sack. I don't shop often, but when I do, it's pretty high end stuff because I got expensive taste. Once you get used to certain lifestyle, you don't want to lose it. So I will forever work hard at this, nothing else really, because I really like social media. I do like entertainment. I like to stay in this era for as long as I can. If it's not this, it'll be podcasting. If it's not this, it'll be maybe acting or writing a book. I have so many stories to tell. I found what I like and I wanna help other people who truly can relate to this because I'm just not a career, traditional career person. Never have been, never will be. I don't like physically working hard. I like working smart. This is a job that requires you to do a lot of planning and thinking ahead and assuming trends, predicting trends. I'm predicting what do people wanna see this month? What do they wanna see? I don't know. 
Well, until next time, while I go think about what do people want to see? Hmm.